Fred's great joy was just being able to express himself um, without, without really having to worry about an audience or, or anything like that, uh, or other people around. Um, so he'd launch himself into these um, absolutely fantastic flights of fancy sometimes. Um, and sometimes um, he would go out to sing a vocal, not really having written anything as a starting point. He would just go and sort of sing anything. And we'd pick it up and go, wow, that's, that's sort of OK. Let's, let's work on that bit. On the way to meeting Freddie for the first time, the day before, I think it was on a Monday we did the session. <coughs> Excuse me, on the Sunday prior to that, I'd had a car crash, a head-on collision with a truck. And I was in some discomfort. I'd broken four ribs and um, also slightly sprained both wrists, which was not really great for a piano player. And um, on the first session, of course, I'd, I said to Dave Clark, I, whatever you do, don't mention anything to Freddie. I don't want him to think I'm complaining about anything. And we started to, um, to record this track in my defense. And um, it was just piano, bass, and drums, and, and, and Freddie. And we were getting you know, more and more intense about this. And, and um, Freddie was going, yeah, this is great. I love all this. Um, you know, harder, faster, play some more twiddly bits, get faster, a bit flasher there, and whatever. And um, I had got what I thought was the definitive performance, as far as I was concerned, anyway. And we went to listen to it back, and Freddie said, um, oh, that's wonderful. It's, it's ever so nearly there. I said, my God, you mean ever so nearly there? He said, yeah, well, I think you could do a little bit more at the end, so it's a bit more exciting or whatever. And at that point, um, Dave Clark said, um, well, Fred, you know, he said, he did have a car crash yesterday, and he's in some degree of discomfort. And Fred said, oh, we'll find him. He said to <laughs> Phoebe, give him some vodka and give him some pills. Make him feel better. We'll go and do it again. It'll be fine. So <laughs> we had to go out and do the whole thing again. Freddie was a great one for testing you. In other words, you had to work damn hard when Fred was about. And, 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 the, and there was none of this, so that'll do business, which is, which is not my way anyway. But um, you know, the, the two of us were such sort of perfectionists in the studio. It's a wonder we ever got anything done, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it was a great, um, it was a great experience. And um, I remember many times in the studio that, um, you know, for example, Fred would go out and sing after I'd finished my bit. And, um, and I'd be sitting there, he would say, well, what do you think of that? And I said, well, it's okay, apart from And he would say, <laughs> I remember one occasion, he turned around and said, for God's sake, he said, you're worse than I am. We went to all the important functions, Christmas, birthdays, and we became very close on a social level. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. That house at Garden Lodge was an absolute delight to be in, um, full of wonderful things and done with impeccable taste. And it was also a home. It was a place that wasn't precious either. Um, fabulous array of friends. We had hysterically funny times. Wonderful sing-songs around the piano with, you know, you name it, they were there. <laughs> but, but, but sometimes just Fred, Peter Strake and myself. Um, hours on end. Is yours tough luck? I do, I do. Yeah. Winifred, you're just a marvel. You are, Jay. If you fuck the way you play the piano, I see why they stay with you. He was an immensely kind, thoughtful, generous, sweet individual. Um, very amusing. He was the most incredibly funny man. And very loyal to his friends. He was incredibly n nervous about, about meeting her in the first instance, but um, Fred had such a wonderful um, presence that, of course, as soon as he met her and got over the original, my God, it's this diva I've loved for many years, he then became very animated and, and, and really wanted to know all the details about her life and these great performances that he had on video and all these, you know, great recorded performances he had of her. And, um, and 
you know, within 10 or 15 minutes of them being introduced, they were, you know, they were best friends. It was an extraordinary lunch. And it, uh, yeah, he was, he was in awe of her. It's not in awe, it's, it's perhaps the wrong word. Um, he had an immense respect for her and, and, and she was one of his favorite performers. So the, the actual meeting in, in Barcelona um, took the edge off when we worked together, but he's, it's still the first time you, you work with someone like that. Um, and I suppose, conversely, the same goes for her working with him. It's a totally alien thing for her to do. She'd never done it before. And I think one has to remember that this was before um, the three tenors had you know, sort of come forth. It was really before people had gotten the idea of mixing you know, rock stars and, and, and opera, operas, opera singers perhaps becoming um, crossover, com crossover successes in the commercial market. I remember when we, um, when we first did Barcelona and um, before he and Montserrat had really performed together, he, um, he was, this was in Ibiza at the Coup Club and um, Montserrat had arrived and he said to me, well, maybe I shouldn't, you know, you know she's, she's a you know, well-respected diva and she's perhaps not used to my cavorting around you know, the way I do. He said, maybe I should sort of tone it down a little bit. I said, well, it's your, your show, Fred, you do what you like. And um, of course, what he'd forgotten um, was that here was this diva that came on, has done all these powerful operatic roles. Of course, she came on like the battleship Potemkin, you know. And, <laughs> and he ran over to me and, like, and he said, she's outdo me, watch this. Boom, and off he went back again. And that was the start of this chemistry. But he was quite taken aback. I, re I just remember him waltzing over to the piano. He said, wow, she's outdoing me. I'm, this is not on at all. And this amazing chemistry then, then started to take hold, and, and off they went. Um, I remember, obviously, the, the, the Freddie the performer. Freddie the private man, I remember um, on wonderful one-to-ones when he, you know, he confided some very private things. Um, which are not to be repeated, and um, he was just a very generous, lovely man. That's all I can say. I think that's it. The Barcelona album and, and subsequent things were not the end of the story. Yes, I, but I guess we would have carried on with his solo album, which was interrupted, fortunately, I suppose, by, by this collaboration with, with Montserrat. Yeah, we would have carried on we would have carried on, um, you know, on a different tack. Mm. Yes, yeah. There were many things we talked about, which, uh, which, um, which perhaps would have come to fruition. Yeah. I remember one thing, which, which sort of, in in a, in some way, sums up Fred's Fred's um, approach to life. Um, we were around there working in the afternoon, and also there was an event in the evening, which just encompassed, uh, sorry, um, um, encompassed the usual suspects. Myself, my wife Linda, um, Peter Straker, um, a few other friends, mm. just the same people that had been round maybe two weeks prior to that. And um, I was just leaving to go home and change. And Fred was fussing around, getting everything right, flowers, um, the right um, tableware, everything right. And I said, Fred, you know, you know, and, he, and he made he made he made some radical change in the flower arrangement. I can't quite remember exactly what it was, but but I said, Fred, you know, calm down, relax a bit. It's it's only us, you know. And he said, My dear, he said that's that's absolutely the whole point. In other words, his friends were the most important people in the world, and that's that's why he made the effort. And it's a it's a great object lesson to anybody. It doesn't, you know, you make, you make more effort for those people you care about than you do for anybody else. And that was perhaps Freddie in a nutshell, yeah. I've been very fortunate in my life to, to have been involved with some of the, you know, the bigger rock bands, played stadium rock, um, jazz, popular music as a studio musician. Um, I think for my money, Freddie Mercury is perhaps the finest 
interpreter of a song I've ever worked with. So the, the, I've never seen anybody that gave so much to a performance. It was the most extraordinary person to watch. Extraordinary emotion when you're on stage with him. I mean, this is, a, this is a, an artist who gave absolutely everything in every performance. Never half measures. So I put Fred right up there with the very best of all time.